Hello and welcome to Open and Shut Book Reviews. My name is Ken. Thanks for joining me. And tonight I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to review a book that's a little off the beaten path from what I usually do. This book was written by someone who suffers with a chronic illness. And her goal by writing this book was to educate others on what it can feel like and how life altering a chronic illness can be for someone. Now, chronic illness doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care if you're a cashier at McDonald's or the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. It can strike without warning after years of being healthy. The exact thing happened to the author of this book, Lisa Snyderman. The book's called A Light in the Darkness. And in 2008, she was diagnosed with something called, let me get this right, dermatomyositis. <laughs> and uh, that's a mouthful. Uh, it wasn't too long before that illness basically completely rearranged the way she had to live her life. It greatly affected her job as an environmental scientist during the day and her budding music career that she was working on after hours. So this condition is basically a long-term inflammatory disorder. Uh, which affects a person's muscles. Now, what you're looking at as far as typical symptoms are rashes, uh, increased muscle weakness. Uh, some people have even experienced inflammation in their lungs, which would be just as painful as you're imagining. There were long periods of time for Lisa at various times since her diagnosis in 2008 where she was confined to a wheelchair just to get around her house. It's not something to, to take lightly. This condition will wreck you. In her book, Lisa addresses the feeling of having to give up her day job as a scientist due to this condition. She talks about, fairly honestly, the identity crisis that arises from doing that. I mean, we all define ourselves by what we do and not as much who we are as people. You meet someone at a party, you don't ask them how are you, or what kinds of things do you like to do, what are your hobbies, we say, what do you do? Because that's how we judge people. Like it or not, that's the way our society is built at the present time. So if you spend your life as an environmental scientist, and then you are afflicted with a chronic illness that takes away your ability to be, a environmental scientist and a contributing person to society at large, uh, how do you reframe your viewpoint of yourself and how do you do it without feeling as though you are suddenly less than now that you can no longer work? Lisa is also very frank about how the illness has affected her marriage to her husband, David. As you can expect, someone who is in love with and who takes care of a person who starts out healthy and then is diagnosed with a life-changing illness, there it could cause some conflict. I mean, let's be honest. You might end up with a partner who feels like, hey, this is not what I signed on for, even though they said the whole, you know, better in sickness and in health thing, but a lot of people, when it comes, push comes to shove, will look at that and say, uh, yeah, but I didn't know it meant this level of sickness. Fortunately, uh, Lisa and David have a very open and honest relationship that's uh, built on a fairly strong foundation, although not to say that the illness hasn't presented some challenges, and she goes into those in the book. Lisa has a great uh, appreciation of how engaging with her music has helped her. She's submitted many of her albums for consideration to the Grammys. She's actually been nominated for some other music awards and, and won a few of them. You can see pictures of them uh, throughout the book. And having that hobby to focus on, she says, has really helped her out. And there is some research to suggest that if you're able to engage with a, a hobby that can kind of take you out of yourself, even if it's just for a limited time, uh, it can help. It doesn't magically cure your illness, of course not. That's That would be ridiculous to think that. But And it's even more than distraction. It just gives your mind the ability to focus on something other than the pain 
you're experiencing with whatever your illness happens to be and if you can if you can disassociate from that pain by entering kind of a meditative state uh, and for a lot of people hobbies can help them do that it gives them something to focus on that's difficult but not too difficult but just difficult enough to where it challenges you and fully engages your brain whether it's writing drawing painting it can really help your your spirits and your your mental uh, acuity and for her it was it was music and some of the darkest times that she recounts in the book are when she thought she would have to give that up now every chronic illness is different and everyone's experience of a chronic illness is unique to them. Two people with say fibromyalgia are not going to have the exact identical experience with that illness. And so this book should in no way be taken as a blueprint on how to live with the, the dermatomyositis, but rather it should be read as a glimpse into a world that's not always talked about. And that's the world of the chronically ill. If anything, I hope that if you were to read this book, you would come away with a little more empathy and a little more compassion for the struggles that chronically ill people go through. So that's it for this edition. Thanks for joining me. I will, of course, uh, post links down below where you can uh, find copies of this book and if you have any questions for me or have any books that you would suggest to me as possible choices to review send them to me ken at openandshutreviews.com until next time i'm ken mckim you take care and read more books